In Dungeons and Dragons, there are two types of maps you commonly encounter, world or region maps and battle maps. I'm Scott Coventry and welcome to Zeal Zaddy. The biggest difference is of course the most obvious, scale. World maps are used to tell you in what direction things are, how to get from point A to point B, what's in between. It's all the information that whomever made the map knew and put down on the map to the best of their knowledge. Although a clever DM might give you a map that's different from the one they've got because they want you to have, for lack of a better word, a colloquial map. <laughs> one that's drawn by a local that isn't accurate, that doesn't have all the points of interest in the spots they really are. Battle maps, on the other hand, are more akin to floor plans so that you can navigate an action sequence. Battle maps usually use square grids. Outdoor, region, or world maps use hex grids. So the reason it's called a hex crawl. Today we're going to make world maps. I'm going to do a small little region, maybe an island, using Wonder Draft by Megasplute. Just for doing these region maps or these uh, world maps. I've been given no free copies. I bought the software my, on my own. I think it was about $30. Uh, it's on Mac and Windows and Linux. In a later video, we're going to cover making a dungeon map using their other software, Dungeon Draft. So the first thing I want to talk about today are the tools I'm going to be using. Wonder Draft, of course, but I also use a Wacom tablet. This is a, uh, an Intuos 3. The software supports it minimally. It doesn't support it like I would like I see support for using a drawing tablet in say Photoshop. I happen to like using them when I'm trying to get uh, softer color blends and things like that. In Photoshop, I'll use them for a lot more because there's a lot more pressure sensitivity and all that. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new map. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to create a new map. We're gonna make it 1500 by 1500 pixels. That is five inches by five inches printed. On screen, that's a good size. I don't have to select the template because I'm making the template by that size and landscape portrait is irrelevant when it's a square map. But this does matter. Selecting the theme sets us up for all kinds of things related to color and look. Um, it can be changed later though, so yeah, let's leave it adventure then we'll change it once we start. So I'm gonna click okay. It'll prepare the map canvas and look at that. What you're seeing is not land, it's brown, but it's actually water. That is the ocean. So the first place we're gonna start is creating our first landmass. There's a couple of ways to do it. One is with the landmass wizard. When you select the wizard, you get some options over here. And when you're ready, you can just generate and you'll end up with some starting land. And you can see what happens over the water is you get this very interesting edge effect. You can see there's like a gradient of color inside the land mass. And then there's these um, water lines to the outside. Now, one thing that I did want to point out is that you can change the theme of your map. Let's change a little bit the texture of the paper. Let's go to equal rectangular. You can see it changes the theme, the look, the overall look of it. I'm going to just stick to paper. I think paper is a good one. It, it, uh, it's simple and it keeps um, kind of an elegant old world beauty, but I'm also going to undo the landmass tool. Undo is just command or command Z on the Mac or control Z on the PC. I'll just undo all the way back. I believe there are 99 levels of undo. Instead, we're gonna make our own land. So we're gonna use the landmass tool. So when I take this tool, I can just start drawing land. Just like in Photoshop, the left and right brackets increase the size of your brush. So if I wanna fill this in quick, I can just select a big brush. I'm gonna to go to the raise landmass tool and this tool is a game changer. I'm gonna get my pen now. So when I go to the edges, what this does is it raises and lowers land in a, in a various level of roughness. 
Now you can see I have the roughness, roughness level set to one. I can change that if I want to make it more or less rough. But then when I go over these edges, I get a beautiful roughness added to the map. With this set to right around 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.48 is fine. You can see it's a fairly smooth level of roughness. There's some roughness, you get some nice edges, then I'm going to bring it up. Let's go up to 1.5. And you'll see a big change in the roughness level. Go across the edge and it suddenly has a lot more little bumps and indents, what have you. It has a nice inland bay. Almost like uh, estuaries, you know, saltwater estuaries along the edge. A couple islands out here. Love little islands, by the way. I think they're cool. So I'm going to use this to cut in, to carve into the land. And that's one of the things I love, too. I think this is a really cool tool. Carving in and out of the land to roughen it or make uh, things like these estuaries, I think is just beautiful. Okay, let's do a little bit, bit of painting. Let's get the paintbrush tool. We can select the ones we want and we can paint what I think is really cool. When I paint this, check this out. It won't go into the ocean. It will only stay on land areas. Now I can kind of roughen some areas in. I can make some areas that get a little deeper. And this is where the pressure sensitivity of the tablet, my wake-up tablet really adds a little bit. It really gets a little bit of a um, uh, change of transparency. What it doesn't do, and I really wish it would do, is it doesn't change the size of the brush. I have to constantly go in and change it as I'm doing stuff. You can model some areas to get a little bit of texture to it. And this is just one color. I'll get it, I'll add a little bit of green where I'm gonna have a forest or something similar to a forest in here. Like I think that's really cool. It's got a little bit of modeling in here, some rough areas that are beautiful. It's at an area where there's gonna be a forest. So I'm gonna have some little mountains and hills over here. I'm gonna put a forest over in this area. Let me go really big. I'm going to roughen in some areas, run it all the way to the edge, because I can, and it won't run into the water. That's amazing to me. <laughs> I'm lifting the mouse and then touching it down like little tad, you know, tabs. I'm going to get this brown. I'm going to brown up kind of in this area. Like it, we'll have something different going on here. Maybe hills or something rather than mountains. That's painting. You, it's very simple. You can paint the land masses, give it the colors and textures you want. If you want a manual color, you just click on manual color and it brings up a color picker. If you ever worked with hex colors, web colors, you can select them here. You can work with the RGB. You can see the RGB. Um, and then A is for uh, the alpha channel, which is transparency. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some mountains. And to do that, we're going to go to the symbols uh, menu right up here. You can see the symbols. And when I go down, you'll see there's several different types. Cities, and it's actually a whole lot of things, not just cities. We'll get to that in a little bit. Trees and forest, and then mountains. The first, this is the first one I want to go to. I'm going to go with a simple mountain, uh, kind of like this one. Now... Just like anything else, I can change the size. I'm using a keystroke to do it. I don't really want giant mountains. And you can see there's some important uh, placement features. Placement density, if it's at one, it will place one in whatever time frame it's set to. I don't know what the time frame is or the, the rate and then the density. So if I have it set to one and I drag across, you can see I'll get mountains that are basically spaced one after another in a certain way. I'm going to change the density up. I'm going to go to 2. So when I draw now, you'll see the mountains are almost double the density. And you'll see when you go to cover, it will fill in spaces between them. It'll, it'll connect them the right way, which that is a beautiful thing. It'll put this mountain behind the one that's there because it has some kind of an understanding of layering, which is terrific. Increase my size a little bit. Oh, that's too small. Actually, I don't even like that. That looked almost like a dune. Let me get a, something like that. I like a few, and I'm going to run a river through it. 
Yeah, I think that's kind of simple and nice. I don't need it to be jam packed with stuff. That's putting down mountains and hills. You can change the size, you can change the density. I'm gonna bring my density back up to one. You can also just select in there and type it in. It's no big deal. If you double click, it'll select. So with a pen or something, it's, it's an easy selection. So let's go put in some trees. So we know we're gonna have a forest. So I've already made the forest area. So let's go select the trees palette. And in here there's all kinds of tree options. Let me pick one that I like, a foresty one that isn't too crazy. You know what, I kind of like this one. And it doesn't look like much when you start, but I think it may, it fills out nicely when you, when you really pack them in. And you can see that it's, it packs them in pretty good. I'm gonna have a more dense spot in the center of the forest. Yeah, I know it takes a while to get them all in. I can just increase the density and the placement rate. And you'll see that my center of my forest will be packed in so tight right away. And I can then start to kind of make the forest lose its density as it gets out. What I don't like is I hate to see hard lines of forest where it just looks like you drew in a straight line. <laughs> and there is a place you can get more trees. This is just what it comes with. I mean, actually, this might have one or two packs installed. You can make your own assets. You can buy custom make, made assets. There are a lot of people who are creating assets they give you for free, per, for personal use particularly. Okay, next up is water. Water is very interesting. They do some very cool things. Water means fresh water, by the way. It's not ocean. Oceans are the zero level. Everything, ever, all the land rises above that. So I'm gonna go to the water tool, the very top of the menu, and you can see there's a bunch of different options, right? So the, uh, the first option is your water appearance. This is how you can change the look of your water. I'm not gonna change that right now. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna place a river. So let's get our first rivers. I said I wanted to run a river out of here, or two there. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna run a river, zoom in a little bit. I'd like to see it a little closer this time. So I'm gonna to go to 150. Spacebar, by the way, and a drag gives you the ability to drag in and out closer. So now that I have my area, I'm gonna click once. It starts my river. Now, I have the river starting with that tapering in area. You can change that and have it just be a square but once, to get to the, once I get to the ocean, just double click. Where you double click is where that river ends. Start there. One thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna meander it a bit through the forest. So the forest gets a little bit of the river running through it and you can see the river peeking through the trees. And I'm clicking over and over in different spots and then I double click at the end of my river's place. I'm gonna go to the symbols and I'm gonna get my trees you'll notice there's an erase, this is an eraser. I can go in and if I get really small, I can erase some trees. That was too much, I want a smaller brush. I wanna erase some trees along the river so we can see it a little better. Although not everywhere along the river. I like some of the blocking. Now one thing that you don't see in the real world very often, it is very, very, very rare is the forking of a river. Rivers don't do this. They don't go. They do that generally only at deltas. Now, it doesn't mean that it never happens. It is exceedingly rare. But what rivers do do, and this is what people, uh, when I think particularly starters with any kind of game map or real map cartography is, they don't realize that actually what rivers do is they join. So if I started a river back here, I could have it meander around and eventually add the volume it has to this river. That is common. I'm gonna add a lake. I love lakes along rivers and I wanna do one up in here. I'm gonna make this a little smaller, but let's get this like, it pools in this flat area. This is a little smaller and just like the land, you can kind of roughen out the edges of rivers or smooth them out. So I'm now going to smooth out this. I think I'm good with that. Now I could also paint it if I want to make the middle of the uh, lake 
a little darker like it's deeper. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, but I'm going to model it a little bit. And I'm going to sort of leave the inside deeper. I'm going to give it a much deeper area on one side, like zoom back out. The last thing I want to do, I want to show you um, the the tool for creating a windrows. In this case, I think I'll put it up here, place it. Now you can also move it with the uh, windrows movement tool. Let me place it over here now. So that's putting rivers and lakes. I'm going to start with the symbols tool and under the, the castle, I don't think it's called the castle tool, symbol tool, of course, there's a palette over here with a whole bunch of different uh, functional symbols you can put on the map. Let's say you want a dragon down in the corner. Click and you have a dragon down in the corner. That's not what I'm looking for though. What I'm looking for is, here, this will be fine, is some kind of city symbols. I want to have a city or a fort, town, so I'm going to select a little castle symbol. I'm going to put a castle on the lake. That I would say is too big. Don't you think that would be a bit of a problem at that size? <laughs> so let's scale way, 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 way down. I'm, at, I'm going to put the castle to the um, west side next to the river and the lake. I do want to have a little town, I think, right up here. I'm going to drop one there, get another little town. I'm going to drop it maybe along the river in the forest. That will be nice. Little little town in there. There you go. So I've put some little cities and towns. By the way, there's a million assets that you can go get that are really cool, and I'll get to that at the end of the video. Another thing you can do is you can add a compass rose if you want. These are pretty cool too. They go nicely with, say, the wind rose. You can center it on it or do it separate, you know. I'm not going to use one on the map, but you can go do it. That's pretty cool to do. The next feature we're going to work with is we're going to go and do um, some paths. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I don't want to be so far out. I don't need to see the whole map like that. Let me go to 125. And that'll allow me to see. I'd like to have a little road or path that runs all the way between these cities. So I'm going to go to the paths tool. I'm going to go simple. I'm going to go with just a regular straight line. And just like the river, you click a point and then it will curve a bit with you, although it's not as meandery as the um, river tool. But you can kind of meander it on your own too. Roads often follow rivers. They they make travel. Once you get to the end, you double click, and your road is your path is done to this little town we put in the forest. Maybe it's a lumbering town or something. And I just double click to close that off, and then I'm going to also add. This also could become a little center between this road here or this path and what is essentially a fortress to the north in there it goes around the river to make it easier and one of the things that I that I don't like is I don't like the move path tool I think it's a a missed opportunity and I have a feeling one day they'll, they'll adjust it but right now all it does is it allows you to select a path and move a whole path See, I don't find that feature particularly useful. It's very rare that you are so off that the entire thing needs to be shifted. It would be great if you could maybe double click and adjust points along the path. I am going to go back into the symbols. I'm going to add some more trees. I don't want it to look like just giant forests. I want it to look more like sparse woodland and woodland areas. You know, these are places where 
yeah, there are trees, but it's not like the middle of this forest that is really packed with trees. This is called the territories tool, and it's how you make political boundary maps. We're gonna do labels. Labels are how you add names. So let's make a name. Let's call this one Karun. C O R U with an umlaut N. You can move this. You can rotate it if you want. I don't need it rotated, but if you want to change it, you can just click on it and it's all editable. If I want to make it with a K, I could do that. I kind of like it with the C, but. I'll leave it that way. Let's call this one uh, High Point, I mean, just for lack of a better name. Let's name the island. We'll call it uh, Cragsland. Oh, I like the K, that's cooler. Um, in this case, what I'm gonna make the type bigger. You know, this one is actually the region. And then I wanna name this lake, so we're gonna use a body of water. The Timeless Lake, or Timeless Lake. And in here, instead of town, I'm gonna to go to water. But I'm also gonna, because it, it's not an ocean, it is a lake, I'm gonna make it much, much smaller. So instead of 56, let's go to 20 point. Let's see if that, even that may be too big. No, that's good. Let's name some seas, okay? Let's call the this up here, the Lost Sea. And while it's selected, I'm gonna select uh, water. I'm gonna make it big again. I'm gonna to go to say 55 point. The Southern Bight, B-I-G-H-T, like a inland body of water. Pretty cool. This needs curvature. All right, we're gonna do a little curvature. Let's give it a little curvature, make it a little smaller. I'm gonna go from 55 to 40. See if that fits a little bit better. It does, and I'm gonna rotate a little too. So I'm gonna click here and rotate it to fit it into that that space, that's beautiful. It really fits that nicely. Okay, the next feature we're gonna use is we're gonna use the overlay feature. This controls your layers, your grid. You can have a, a hex grid or you can have a, a square grid. There's various types. And even the, the hex grid, there's a couple of different types of hex grids. When it's flat, they run vertically. When it's pointed, they run horizontally. And you can adjust the size of your grid. I'm gonna adjust it, make it a lot smaller. And then uh, make the line width, like right now it's four, I think that's too heavy. I like thinner lines, I'm gonna to go to two. Okay, so we're gonna go from the grid tool, we're gonna to go to the frame tool. Now, the frame creates a frame around your map. The All you have to do is enable it and you'll have a frame. You can change the look, I think these are like, too complicated, busy, what have you. Kind of like that. That's nice, simple. I like it. I'm gonna leave that. Add a uh, scale tool. So let me go create, add it down here. You can adjust the size and shape. Um, if I don't want it anymore, I click delete. There's a, an asset tool built for Wonderdraft. It's called MythKeeper. What it really does is it brings assets from cartographyassets.com. If you go down here on the menu, there's Wonderdraft. Click to Wonder, on Wonderdraft, and you can find assets that you can import. This could be anything. It could be new themes. It could be custom boxes, frames. There's like a million different things. And it's amazing, custom brushes, uh, custom symbols. Now, MythKeeper itself, that's what this is, is actually the um, asset manager for it. It's what imports um, and knows where you're storing your assets. You download it, it's uh, a separate application. MythKeeper is a great tool. You can go over to cartographyassets.com. I can tell you from ex personal experience, you can binge watch assets all day. <laughs> you can I really want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, Zeal Zaddy is all about storytelling. That's what 
That's what we love. When we play games, when we play role-playing games, we don't really want to play just combat all the time. We love the story. We love the narrative. And to me, maps are a part of the narrative. Let me know in the comments below if there's something else you'd like me to try or to show you. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Enjoy your world building. Thank <laughs> you.